Let's welcome Kathy Holly and Spotlight. Oh, I love that music. I feel like I'm in Paris. But wait a minute. We are here for Spotlight in Pacifica, Channel 26. Welcome, everybody. I have some fantastic guests tonight on Spotlight. Listen to this hot steel and cool ukulele. Mr. Eric Sylvester's group. I can't wait to talk about it. Thank you. And over here, Mr. Paul Rose. And you're a wonderful singer, and I can't wait to hear more about you. Thank you, Kathy. I'm so glad you're both on the show. Eric, I'd like to start with you. All right. It's so happenstance that we met, and we met at a benefit that I was putting on, and it was so great to get your card yes. that night, and here you are on the show, and now I know a little bit more about your music. But when did you start being a musician? Well, I got an early start thanks to my parents who enrolled me in a very special school that was called the Archbishop's Choir School. Choir? Fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grades, I got an intense musical training Fantastic. to sing in parts and so on. Yes. And uh, we sang every Sunday at the cathedral in downtown Cincinnati, my old hometown. Fantastic. So that was an intense baptism in music. It was. Then, immediately after that, the folk music craze hit. Oh, yes. And my older brother, who was four years older than me, when he started college and I was just starting high school, he was instrumental in creating an organization in Cincinnati that was called the Queen City Balladeers. Oh, I love the name. And that was a folk music club. I remember folk music, you know. And it was based at love the University it. of Cincinnati, and it was a student group originally, so I couldn't join because I wasn't... Right, you weren't old enough I yet. wasn't old enough. But I was sort of an unofficial member because I followed my brother wherever he went. And as soon as my brother got a second guitar, I inherited his first guitar, and that's when I started playing guitar and learning those folk songs and getting into that whole folk music scene. Right, and then you enjoyed it, right? Immensely, You did yes. all those wonderful songs from the 60s, mm -hmm. like Where Have All the Flowers Gone, maybe? All did those you? classic songs, In fact, I was, I was wondering, did, in Cincinnati, did they hear about the Summer of Love, 67? Oh, of course, of yes, course. indeed. Good, I'm glad to hear that, mm -hmm. because that was some of the best music. Right. The best. But then what happened, fast forward, you, you were doing that, and then later on what happened? You picked up the ukulele, or you well, went into the music biz? Yes, I got the. I picked up the ukulele partly because, as part of the Queen City Balladeers experience, I eventually found my way into a jug band, uh -huh. and they That's needed so somebody to play a banjo ukulele. It had a banjo body yeah, and a ukulele I've seen those. neck. They're, they're really interesting. And so I had this experience uh, playing and singing in a jug band, which sings kind That's of old-fashioned jazz. Yes. and blues. We've had those out here. Mm -hmm. You know, jug bands are fun. Right. fun. And this was all in, in this context of the Queen City Balladeers, this folk music club, which existed. Mm -hmm. After the first year, they actually became a club in and of itself so that I could join. In other words, they disassociated from being an official University of Cincinnati club uh, so, it was open. so that they could then open membership to everybody. And then the club grew uh, immensely. And does it still exist? It still exists to this day. Oh. It still runs a weekly coffee house during the school year. Oh, that's fabulous. And for many years it staged in one of the city, Cincinnati City Parks outdoor summer concerts, a oh, series of four summer very concerts. Very popular. That and would I, be of great. course I sang in some of those in those days too. And now fast forward, after those days, did you get into music professionally and do some work yourself with I your own did, group? I did. I mean, my most professional thing that I did was I happened to, through the Queen City Balladeers, by the mm -hmm. way, meet and become friends with Peter, Paul, and Mary, oh, and mainly oh, specifically Peter group. Yarrow. Yes. And yes. he took my little trio, singing trio, kind of under wing and brought us to New York and recorded some demos for us and tried to shop us a record deal. What was the name of the trio? That was called Monday's Children. And so after that, you didn't do it, it didn't make it. But we, did didn't, we didn't get a deal then. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, that was a wonderful experience, of course. Then I got to meet John Denver. 
Oh, kind of through oh this gosh, through the I, Queen City Ballet. I want to touch too. you. This is great. Before he became a huge star, of course, he came to the Queen City Balladeers and sang some uh, songs for us in the Queen City Balladeers, and he probably walked home with two hundred dollars or something like that. Right. Well, it sounds familiar. And yeah. uh, and that <laughs> was probably today. good pay in those days. That was terrific pay in those days. <laughs> so, but I got to know uh, John Denver, and it was uh, oddly enough John Denver who recommended me to play guitar behind Mary Travers of Peter, Paul, and Mary. Yes. That is, when oh, Peter, Paul, and Mary totally. first split up, yes. Mary was the first one out the door with a solo album, the first one to book a national tour. So John Denver recommended me to Mary because he knew I was an outstanding guitar player. Well, this is terrific. I, you should brag about that. Not many people can say that. So I got to and do a national to do tour with Mary, and the first place we played was Carnegie Hall. Fantastic, and, we played and you played all, all of her country. her songs that she a part of them were with. Peter yeah, Paul she and also Mary, sang right? some of the old Peter Paul and Mary songs as well, great. Peter Paul and Mary classics, plus all the songs from her new solo album. And did you sing harmony with her? Sometimes no, we no, were strictly just, the band behind her. All right, strictly yeah. the band. Yeah. I, there was a pianist yeah. by the name of Paul Griffin, and uh -huh. two guitar players and a bass player. That is just great story. You must have had wonderful times on the road. We did. With Mary. I bet you did. She was a nice person, yes? She was. She, she was, was a really good person. Very nice to me and well, good to work with. I, you know, I'm sure. Do you have any story you remember that was outstanding when you toured? Did you tour all over the U.S.? We did tour all over the U.S. We well, even went up into Canada a little bit, but uh, we played beautiful orchestra hall in Chicago. That's oh, another great. one of those architectural classics, you know, yeah. a wonderful, beautiful concert hall. And uh, ended up at uh, the, uh, the famous sort of nightclub on the Sunset Strip. Oh, in, oh in, one of those uh, in, in Hollywood. Hollywood. In Hollywood. Well, that was the what, end of our tour. So what happened after that tour? Did you go, you, I know you have another profession, and just very briefly, you finished? Yeah, the, that tour ended, school? and uh, and then... Um, I went on actually to get another degree. I got an MBA. An MBA, all right. Yeah. And I did work in the music publishing business for some short period of years. Well, you never left music, really. That's right. I've been you performing in one way or another all of these years, well, ever since me, I was 15. Brings me to this wonderful group that you have started, right? Right. Called in recent years, about Hot, five years ago. Oh, really? Hot Steel. And cool ukulele. I want to show the audience these wonderful CD CDs. This one is called Hot Steel and Cool Ukulele. That one Tropical is Tropical Swing. Tropical Swing. <laughs> there it is. I feel like we're there in Hawaii. And you recorded both of these in Hawaii. Actually, then, that one was recorded in Hawaii. And the and other this one, one, which is called, is called uh, Hapa Haole Hit Parade. Hapa Holly Hit Parade. Where was that That's recorded? Right. That one was recorded here in California. Well, tell us about the group. And um, and very briefly, because we're going to hear you. First of all, we're going to hear a cut from... Maybe we should play the cut first. Let's do that. Let's okay. play from, Let's from Tropical it. Swing. Let's play the hit song, Tropical Swing, with Eric Sylvester's group. Swing is the typical thing in Hawaii. Tropical swing is anything else but new. Picture a hula girl swaying. Picture a beautiful moon. Picture an orchestra playing. An old Hawaiian too. Melodies fair have never been rare in Hawaii. Strange as it seems, melodious dreams come true. The mainland's insane now about that brand new thing. From Hawaii to the original land of swing. There's lots of talk about rhythm. There's lots of talk about swing. It's a tropical, semi-tropical, South Sea sort of a thing. Why all this talk about rhythm? Why all this feverish talk? In Hawaii, nay, the swing today is ancient history to us. Oh, 
it's great. I love it. And that's when was that song written? Back in the 30s. So you didn't write any. Oh of these. no, you just no. chose. A these whole are all guitar. old hits from the 30s and 20s, and some some into the 40s. So I, I don't understand. You ended up recording in Hawaii. Have you spent a lot of time in Hawaii? Yes, we've. Uh, my wife and I have gone for several visits over the years. Lucky you. And mm -hmm. then the, I heard the Hot Steel. That's right. So the name of the band is very descriptive. Hot Steel refers to the steel guitar that's right, played this way, yes, I which know. originated in Hawaii. It was invented in Hawaii. That yeah. style of playing. It's, and then of course yeah. the cool ukulele is simply uh, the cool ukulele and um, I'm singing the songs. But how did you meet this group? How did you get the group together? Where? Well Very actually, briefly, we don't yeah. have too much time, uh, I found this group through an ad. You know, they had placed an ad saying that they were looking, searching for a ukulele player. And oh. I happened to see oh. it oh, and I called them and said, hey, I'd like to try out for your band. So I joined an already existing band that was playing in this style. And that was in Hawaii? No, that was here. That was here. In California. All right, but how yes. did you, I don't understand, we're going to watch a video that was made in Hawaii. Now, how did you end up getting the band in Hawaii? Well, so on my various visits to Hawaii, uh -huh. I did meet these fellows, you know, who had a, actually a, a swing band, not in the Hawaiian swing style, but in the hot club style of Django yes. Reinhardt, oh, Stefan sure. Grappelli. Very popular. So on the Tropical Swing album that they play on, that I recorded in Hawaii, there's a fellow who plays swing fiddle and right. swing guitar like uh, uh, the hot club yes. of Paris. Well, let's watch that video that you made in okay. Hawaii. It's called a jamming session, right? That, that's right. And you're singing I'm... I'm pal, I'm which pal. means I'm done, I'm finished, I'm through, I'm out of here. Oh, that's <laughs> in Hawaiian. That's right. Oh, that is absolutely great. It is. It's swinging. And, and it's the, these jazz. songs really yeah. are jazzy. They oh, come from definitely. the jazz age. Well, that's like, I mean, I can hear it right now. It's, exactly. it's like the hot club. You it know, is. It's Django Reinhardt, then it's Hawaiian. So I'm pal means I'm out of here? It does. <laughs> Literally. I can't believe it. That's so funny. Tell So what do you do now with this wonderful band? I know, you know, I, I know you're not working with the whole band all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, I, we don't have a regular gig. On occasion, we've played at the Forbidden Island in Alameda, which is a wonderful tiki bar uh, that offers some live music from time to time. Uh, and uh, so we're we're ready to entertain anywhere that anybody would like us to do this style of old-fashioned right. Hawaiian swing. You heard out of you heard us out here in Television Land. So definitely, <clears throat> okay, we got to get you to do your solo now. Okay, right, you're going to sing one live, everybody. I want to learn to speak Hawaiian. I want to learn to speak Hawaiian so I can say the sweetest things to you. I want to learn to speak Hawaiian so I can do the hula hula too. I've learned to say aloha nui yo way, the sweetest little words I ever knew. And when I am a kama'aina, it's going to thrill me through and through. Honey cow, a wiki wiki. They taught me on the beach at Waikiki. Well, a kahau meaning whoopee. I am learning them fast, you can see. So, after all, what does it matter if I should stutter on a word or two? I want to learn to speak Hawaiian. Cause I'm Papuli simply crazy over you. Papuli simply crazy over you. Oh, terrific.
terrific. Eric, that goes over great anywhere, Thank you. anytime. And I think I'm, you're going to be coming to... As we say in Hawaiian, mahalo. Mahalo, mahalo. I think I would like to manage the group and have you perform all the time. This is great music. Thank okay. you. I think we need more places for that. It's just terrific. So everybody, don't forget, Hot Steel and Cool Ukulele. Two CDs, and they can go to your website yeah. and buy them. Or they can find them on cdbaby.com. cdbaby.com, everybody. Tropical Swing, and then the other one you had pronounced so beautifully, and I'm afraid. Hopaholi Hit Parade. Hopaholi Hit Parade, and you don't spell Holly like my name. It's different. That's right. <clears throat> it's Hawaiian. Well, now let's move on here to Mr. Paul Rose. Well, thank you, Kathy. Paul, it's so great to see you. Now, Paul, I know you from Open Mics. Yes. And you come to my open mic, which, by the way, is the next one is March 22nd when this show finally airs. I don't know if people may not get that, but it's just great. And you're going to be, Eric, on my show for I March will. 22nd. Be just terrific. Right. But you have been singing. When did you start singing? Well, I think I started singing when I was a little boy. I was the first uh, child of three. Uh, I have two brothers, and uh, my mother oh. used to sing to me when uh, when we were little kids and uh, I started singing then. Then I sort of left it for a while and then when I was about 11 years old or 12 years old, I, uh, the show Mr. Wonderful hit Broadway with Sammy Davis Jr. Oh in the starring gosh, role and this yes. was a big deal for black people. Yes. Uh, I grew up in, in Ohio too, like Eric. I and just found out I grew up in Cleveland. Cleveland. Okay, Eric's from Cincinnati, you're from Cleveland. I'm from Cleveland. Wow, and, we have but, Ohio. Uh, I hope. Why did you ever leave Ohio, that song? <laughs> <laughs> why, oh, why oh, did you both leave Ohio? Well, here you are. We're happy to have you in California. So you said you did. You heard about the I, musical? Or? I heard about that musical, and it was a big deal. And friends, my parents didn't have enough money to go to New York just to see a show, but uh, their friends, some of their friends, did go to New York just oh, to see wonderful. that Sammy show. Sammy Davis. Then the oh. very next week, my fair lady opened and that was a big deal all over the country and and so i really started uh with show business uh uh tunes you know then those two years was west side story bells are ringing um ah, it was the uh, golden age music in a way. man yeah More golden, modern, age. golden age of, yes. of musical theater yes. Yes. and that's so wonderful but i know a little story that apparently Someone recorded you singing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star when you were two years oh, old. No, oh, no, no. <laughs> we're going to play it right now. All right. All right, here we go. They didn't have oh, any tape Paul. recorders in those days. No, that, that was, was recorded on, on what? Yeah, oh. it was a disc. The guy came to the house with a disc recorder, and he just direct mic to disc. Those big things called records, it's called right? Records, oh, yes. it is just priceless. I'm glad you <laughs> saved it and brought it to the show, and I'm glad your style changed. Oh, well, I man, think you voice. really did. Your voice changed. Uh, yes. yes, it <laughs> certainly did. And so fast forward then from two years old, you were immersed in music, and you didn't realize it. I guess I I think right? so yes and then in in high school I was in the chorus and uh -huh. and we sang uh, uh, Brahms and Mozart and stuff like that and oh. then I was in a little small group called Chanticleer not related to the Chanticleer that's around here but we sang more popular tunes from the 30s oh, really? the songs oh, like me and my shadow and oh, and yes. uh, while we're young and songs like that and we would go to different clubs and 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 sing that. Oh, you would. You would go to clubs yes, and sing it. Yes, yes, were yes. You, and so were you 21 then? No, 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 no. We were high school kids. I was, but uh, I was 16. But people wanted to hear. I was 16. They wanted to hear that music. They did. You know, that's different now. I mean, this is really true for those out in, in TV land. Um, some of us have actually had the experience as young adults performing and we, clubs loved it. You know, they would let us in. You wouldn't be ID'd at the door. You know? <laughs> in fact, I just think of those, when I think of piano bars, I used to go with my mother to piano bars. And we talked about piano bars because you've sung in piano bars 
and now what we call open mic and yes. the few piano bars yes. that are left yes. there's not well, many left i'm not a professional musician like eric but uh, i just uh, just a piano bar singer i'm an amateur and i like to sing in but piano you bars but you have a wonderful voice well thank you and thank I you so we, much i mean other than the 2 year old you know <laughs> recording that was made paul but i would love to hear you sing something and i think you did bring i like i like songs that are older than me and uh, this of is course. a song from the 1930s, 1939 to be exact, and I think a lot of people will recognize it. All right, let's hear you. What okay, is it called? It's called If I Only Had a Brain. I could while away the hours conferring with the flowers, consulting with the rain. And my head I'd be scratching while my thoughts were busy hatching If I only had a brain I'd unravel every riddle for any individual In trouble or in pain With the thoughts I'd be thinking I could be another Lincoln If I only had a brain Oh, I could tell you why the ocean's near the shore. I would think of things I never thunk before. And then I'd sit and think some more. I would not be just a nothing, my head all full of stuff and my heart all full of pain. And perhaps I deserve you and be even worthy of you if I only had a brain. When a man's an empty kettle, he should be on his mettle, and yet I'm torn apart. Just because I'm presuming that I could be kind of human if I only had a heart. I'd be tender, I'd be gentle, and awful sentimental regarding love and art. I'd be friends with the sparrows and the boy who shoots the arrows if I only had a heart. Picture me a balcony above a voice sings low. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? I'd hear a beat, how sweet, just to register emotion, jealousy, devotion, and really feel the part. I would stay young and chipper, and I'd lock it with a zipper if I only had a heart. Life is sad, believe me, missy, when you're born to be a sissy without the vim and voive. But I could change my habits, never more be scared of rabbits if I only had the noise. I'm afraid there's no denying, I'm just a dandelion, a fate I don't deserve. But I could show my prowess, be a lion, not a mouse, if I only had the noise. Oh, I'd be in my stride, a king down to the core. I would roar like I never roared before. And then I'd roar and roar some more. I would show the dinosaurus who's king around this forest, a king they'd better serve. Why would my regal beezer I could be another Caesar if I only had the nerve. Fantastic. I feel like Thank I'm at you. the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> that is just great. Thank you, guys. Thank oh, what you. What I Thank love you. about 
everything you do, you really throw yourself into it. Well, I try. I, I try. think you could do all those parts. Well, I like to sing in piano bars or, around. I like to, I've like. i been singing with Madeline Edstrom lately. She plays here in Pacifica yes, at Valimar yes. Station on Mondays. I know that. I love it. And Val's in Daly City she on She keeps Tuesdays. it going. She brings her piano out there in television land. I hope you appreciate that. You should be at the Valimar on Monday nights and come and sing with Madeline. Yeah. I do it and you do it. Yes. And, Maybe, Eric, sometime you'll come in. And it's great. And it's called Open Mic. Open Mic. Absolutely. And it's the old concept of piano bar still exists at Martuni's. She also plays there. She plays there on Wednesdays. In San Francisco. And, and, uh, yes. Right? So we have Val's, Valimar, and then we have Martuni's. And then she also plays at the Cove. The Cove on Thursdays. Thursday nights. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, she plays in Carmel at Clint Eastwood's place. Mission like Ranch. The, Mission Ranch. Now, that is one of the real concepts of the old-fashioned piano bar. It's the few that there's... It, it's the only one, really, in that area that is left. What we mean by piano bar is we used to sit right around the piano. And, of course, you remember, and I remember, everyone used to know the lyrics to all the songs, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That was the important thing. Yes, there was no reading. No, you he, didn't hold up your iPhone because you didn't have an iPhone did. in <laughs> yes. days. But I, I know, but I'm just remembering all these wonderful things. Eric, did you ever go to a piano bar? Oh, absolutely, I've been to a piano bar. Well, yeah. there we go, but we have to keep those going, and there's we do. none left. So there are hardly, hardly any left. I can any. remember when there were five on Bush Street, and on, on Polk Street, I mean. Yeah, well, you went to uh, Mexico recently, and you met that wonderful piano player who you know and yes. his name is Dennis, uh, Crow. Dennis Crow. He used to work at a lot of those piano he bars. He did. He worked in the Polk and, Street. And, and now in Puerto Vallarta they're trying to get a piano bar going I guess. And it's uh, Well it's a theater on the first level and a piano bar on the second And level. it's called Encanto in, in Puerto, Puerto, Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta. Well I don't know if I can make it next weekend. Now in the meantime I thought you know the show is almost over. I've right. enjoyed having both of you so much. Thank you well, music, so much. Music, Thank you, music, music. So I think what we should do is go out with a song. All How right. about it? Yes. Eric also does the Great American Songbook. Absolutely I sing the Great American Songbook. Classics like this. And one more. It must have been moon glow way up in the blue. It must have been moon glow that led me straight to you. I still hear you say. One hold me fast And I start in praying Oh Lord, please let this last We seem to float right through the air Through the air Heavenly song Seem to come from everywhere And now when there's moon up in the blue, way up in the blue, I'll always remember that moon glow gave me you, gave me you. Oh, everybody, good night. I'll see you next time on Spotlight.